that tape will rip your skin. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me, Diamond LaShawn, and we what? We back at it again. If this is your first time here, welcome, welcome. Come on in and grab a seat. And if you've been here before, then you already know what's what because you already gained. Today, I'm gonna do a um, video that is a Q&A about my plastic surgery and um, all the questions that you guys have had, whether you asked me on social media, I'm happy to see a lot of you guys over there chatting me up in my DMs or if you ask me in the comments over here, which I also love oh so much. I love when you guys engage with me. I am going to be answering the questions that you guys have asked me, whether on social media or whether over here in the comment section about my procedures and the questions that you guys might have had about pricing and all the rest of those different things. I'm going to have my phone. I'm going to be looking at the questions because I wrote them all down and I'm going to be answering them. If after this video you have additional questions, you can ask them but I'll probably just respond to them um personally um and uh personal message or via dm over on instagram where a lot of you guys talk to me at so um yeah let's get into it um so while I'm looking for the questions you guys kind of already know what I've had done I have videos up kind of explaining what I've had done and um, who my doctor was and all the rest of that good stuff. Um, and a lot of you guys seem to have a couple of questions about air sculpt, which I did not get. I did not get air sculpt. I got traditional lipo. I did share my air sculpt consultation experience and a part of that experience is what led me to get traditional lipo instead of air sculpt. Um, so if you guys are watching due to air sculpt questions, um, I pretty much have already answered those in the previous videos where I shared my consultation experience. Um, and I probably won't be going over those in this video, but if you guys wanted to know about the surgery that I actually did see through, then this is the video for you. So the first question that I gathered that you guys, um, wanted to know was what size are the new boobies? Um, I came from a 34B. Um, and throughout my pregnancy, they kind of fluctuated. They went up and down. I think I had like some some maternity bras that were kind of on the D side, but um, that's because my boobies were filled with milk. It wasn't because of any other reason because prior to that I was a B. Um, and I just recently went out and bought my new bras and they are, uh, they fluctuate between a 34 uh, double D and a 32 triple D so that is what size the new girls are now I know sometimes it, it's kind of hard to tell like what's what but I did put on an old bra prior to um just to kind of like see what they looked like and child that brought them even cover a nipple so um that is the actual true size I was measured at Victoria's Secret and those bras fit great. So that is the new size booby. That is the cup size. That is the back size. Those are the things. Um, just to give you guys a look. They don't look that big in shirts and clothes and different things like that. Um, but they look, they, they're perfect for what I was going for and I did not get a lift. So they kind of lifted the, the, the boob area the way that I wanted them to since I wasn't actually getting a lift so I really really like what I got and I'm 100% satisfied with what I got especially because I was able to avoid a lift um next question do you regret surgery not at all um I do not regret surgery I think now I'm just kind of thinking hmm I probably should have waited a little longer because I'm kind of thinking I want another baby <laughs> which is crazy and insane and just absolutely ridiculous but um yeah the the healing process was brutal not gonna lie so sometimes I'm just like child if 
if and when I do become with child again. I don't know if I'm gonna go back that route, but I say that now we, we change our mind a hundred times depending on how we feel. So do I regret surgery? Not at all because I don't believe I should have to sit with a body that I don't want while waiting or deciding. I think I should be fine all the time. <laughs> But um, sometimes I do wonder if I'm going to end up wanting more procedures after I have a kid, uh, if I have another kid. So next question, how long and, and how hard was the healing process? Ciao, honey, ciao. So I, I would probably just sum it up to say that I'm still healing. I'm not in any more pain. I don't experience too much discomfort anymore. Um, but I am still wearing my faha. I am still wearing my foams and boards. Um, I have them on as we speak. Um, and I do still recommend getting massages if you guys have that in your budget. I am, I got my surgery in May, so May, June, July, August, September, October, November. I'm seven months post-op, well, almost seven months post-op. I'll be seven months post-op on the 20th. Um, and I feel good for the most part. If I don't wear my faha for too long, I will blow a little bit. I will become inflamed um, because you really are healing up to a year after you have surgery. A lot of people say three months and they take the faha off, but most of the time that's just what you see. And then at night they have their faha on um, and not wearing it can kind of give you like little aches and pains on your sides and different things like that or wherever you got your surgery at. The boobs are absolutely fine. No issues with that. This is more of a lipo thing. Um, the massage I just were really tough to get through not gonna lie I was kind of like oh my god why did I do this to myself and <laughs> when getting those done but um you do feel better after you get them to get some of that extra you know fluid and stuff out I remember them like they were yesterday they were not fun um but yes I would say that it the pain probably lasted for about three to four months um, I have also had a lipo burn, as you guys know, if you've already seen my videos. And so that that didn't heal for two months. It healed two months in. Um, yeah, about two and a half months in, it was completely healed. And my lipo pain subsided by the, the two and a half mark as well. So I would say there, as far as discomfort and pain and probably sleeping weird. And if you had a BBL, that's around the time the girls start sitting or start to expect the fluff fairy. So if you get surgery, I would say at least give yourself four and a half months to feel no pain, to feel top of the top. But um, if you had lipo or BBL or anything where they took fat and put it somewhere else, you will probably have discomfort for up to a year if you're not wearing your fa. If you have had a previous injury, i.e. had a baby prior to that, i.e. super big prior to that or a completely different size. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, was your faha uncomfortable? How often do you wear the faha? I wear the faha all the time. Every chance that I get. The faha is uncomfortable. It's not supposed to be comfortable. It's supposed to snatch you, darling. Um, just like surgery is not comfortable. It's supposed to snatch you, darling. Some things, like they say, beauty is pain. This is one of them. Sorry to say. I wish this was seamless. But if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. It pretty much is one of those things that after you get surgery, if you're not wearing your faha, you're ruining your investment. Your faha is going to help retract the skin it's going to help reduce some of that inflammation and pain it's going to help shape your body out the way that you want it especially if you didn't already have a natural shape or you didn't already have close to the natural shape that the doctors are going to give you and sculpt you um to have if you don't worry your body you're just kind of throwing your money down the drain because as you inflame and different things like that you're going to develop fibrosis you're going to have little knots and stuff which is fibrosis you're going to have little swollen pockets aromas different things like that if you're not compressing properly so the faha is very important especially the first three months even after the first three months i didn't stop wearing it when i went on vacations i would not wear it when i had to wear swimsuits and things like that after the three month mark but at night i would wear it or in between 
between when I wasn't going to have on swimsuits or I was going to have on clothes that could allow for a faja to be under it, I wore my faja. I have my faja on right now, foams and boards, I don't play. I want to be snatched completely for as long as I can be snatched, okay? Because that's what I got surgery for. And, you know, your body is still kind of healing, forming, and doing all the rest of those things for at least up to a year. So, I would wear the Faha as much as I could for a year. That's what I'm aiming for. My husband hates the Faha. He likes this stupid Faha. But I wear it anyway because, baby. Duh. <laughs> um... How bad was the scarring? Scarring was actually not that bad. That depends on your doctor. That depends on your doctor. Your surgeon can get pretty crafty with how good or bad he is at um, giving you incisions um, and incisions that are are going to heal well. I'm going to just be real. The black community, please do not expect to be getting no, no um, invasive procedure of any kind and not get any hyperpigmentation or scarring that's just not in the cards for us we have a lot of beautiful things about being black but our bodies are very much so sensitive to injury let's just be clear so if you are getting cut or marked or maimed in any way even if it is through surgery or constructive or cosmetic or necessary surgery you will get some hyperpigmentation and you might even keloid that is just something that is a part of our lineage and it is what it is but there are ways to get rid of scarring there are ways to prevent scarring uh silicone patches definitely help moderma bio oil all of these things once you are completely healed and your incisions have healed my scarring was not that bad even my lipo burn was not that bad did not heal that terribly it's a little darker than the rest of my skin but it's nothing where i'm like oh wow this is crazy it did not keloid like i thought it was going to it's a little bit raised but nothing crazy um if you guys did scar or have anything like that um there are also some um some uh things that you can do there's cortisone shots that can kind of flatten scars there are also some people out there who can lighten and brighten scars as well as you can do like silicone patches if you want to do like an at home type of remedy whatever the case might be but for me scarring was not that bad i just have hyperpigmentation on the two incisions that were made um by my pelvis where um i was draining at and my surgeon actually did very inconspicuous incisions Decisions. he did one right above where my belly button um piercing was and then one that was i think right under my c-section scar so you really can't see it at all except for the two that are kind of hyperpigmented and then i have one little scar that's on my belly from tape uh, so if you guys are considering surgery or getting anything done, please do not put tape on your body in any way to hold any gauze, to do any of that. Just lay the gauze there and apply your fire over it because that tape will rip your skin. Even KT tape. Do not be trying to tape yourself up too soon. Your skin is very fragile. That tape will take your skin off, okay? So be careful about that if you want to avoid scar scarring. How long until you can have sex after having surgery? Well, that depends. What did you get done? Um, me, I only got lipo on the front and on the flanks. And I got my boobs done. So I could lay on my back, child. There were some things that could 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 happen. Um, I But I, I always kept my faha on. Because somebody rubbing up against that skin is going to hurt. Just being clear, just being open okay that that skin is gonna hurt um it's very tender it's very raw um it's not gonna be no romp or room type of experience but it can happen happened for me i will have my files on standby i ain't taking this file off until after then i'm gonna wash her and change into a new one because i'm crafty that way but um i would i would recommend you wait at least a month and a half if you can't wait maybe three weeks but i would i would recommend that just to you know make sure you're not uncomfortable because it's really not that deep if you if you hurting the whole time i would not recommend because sex is an experience for both parties not just one um if you got a bbl that's going to kind of be hard because you got to lay on your stomach and then if you're doing it from behind that sort of situation i'm not really sure what type of pressure can be applied to new fat don't kill your fat child try, try and be grown 
so i'm not really sure but i know for me in the procedures that i had i i was active with my husband uh, in a very short time <laughs> Um, how long did it take for my lipo burning hill? I answered that, um, I think in the previous question, but it took about two, two and a half months. It was a long process, but it healed. Um, next question. Did you do anything to your butt? No, thankfully enough. I didn't have to do anything to my butt. Um, if you guys know me personally, then you already know I'm just kind of blessed and I'm very, very happy. I do wish that I did something to my hips. If I could get fat transferred to the hips, I probably would. Um, you know, I really like the full curve look, but um, yeah, no, I didn't do anything to my butt. How much were your procedures? This seems to be like a really like big question, but how much my procedures were? I paid 6,500 total and that's just for me. I cannot guarantee that this is what you will pay. Uh, they go by uh, location and they also go by body type and what they're gonna have to be doing for you. I got silicone implants. I got them under the muscle. They were $3,500. My lipo was $4,000. I was expecting to pay more, but because I did not get 360 and I only got the front and sides, that's how much I paid um overall for everything and i went in miami uh went to doll's plastic surgery because i'm sure somebody's gonna probably ask that and my doctor was dr berman and yes my boobs were under the muscle <laughs> like i said um and there is a scission an incision right up under the boob i have no incision through the nipple nothing up because that would imply a lift, you know, pretty simple procedure. Um, where did I stay? When I got my procedure done, I stayed in Aventura, Florida. Um, I, I make that face because it's just Aventura, but I just kind of chalk it up to being Miami. So Aventura, Florida, um, and I stayed in the Airbnb. I did not tell my Airbnb host that I was there to get a surgery. I thought that he could possibly freak out. So I just said that I was staying with family, which was true. My husband and my baby were there. Um, got my surgery. I had all my stuff on top of this Airbnb mattress so that I would not bleed on his things, honey. And um, just kind of made sure that my support team cleaned up behind me so that uh, I wouldn't leave any any bio products behind, any, any issues. But yes, I stayed in the Airbnb and I, did, I checked out with no problems or no issues. Um, but if you are gonna be staying in public property, make sure that you are careful so that you don't have to pay any fees for cleaning up or incidentals or anything like that. How much was spent overall? I think for my Airbnb total, I stayed in a two bedroom house in Aventura. Maybe, maybe it was 2000 to stay there for the entire stay because it was five days. So it was between 1500 and 2000, five days. Um, my surgeries, like I said, were 6500 And um, with that, I also purchased a Faha and I purchased two surgical bras, the sur two, sur two, blah, 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 two surgical bras. The, the surgical bras were $50 each. The Faha was $110. So factor that in as well. And then I also spent about $2,200 on massages. So total, that is about $10,600, about 10K all in. Um, 10.5 all in give or take you know some little incidentals and different things like that that's not factoring in food that i ate that's not factoring the um the um 
the car that we rented or anything like that so it just depends on how you're going to be going about moving around and how you're going to stay and all the rest of those things um if you're going to do recovery house if you're going to do private stay oh and i didn't even i didn't even factor in my nurse so i would say about eleven thousand two hundred factoring in my nurse if I'm at 10.6 now, 10.5 now, I would say about 11, 11.1, 11, 11, 11.2, um, including my nurse. Um, so, yeah, a lot of this stuff can change. Prices can change. They can get way more expensive depending on how bougie you stay in, child, or, or how economic you're trying to be. Because um, that also doesn't include my flights. <laughs> so, it really just depends on how much you're willing to pay um and 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 where you're trying to go and what you're trying to get done um there are ways to get it cheaper but i recommend you doing the safest option and not necessarily just the cheapest option so if you guys have any more questions any um you know things that you need answered that maybe weren't answered here that you probably didn't get around to asking me please dm me i'm here to answer or help in any way that i can and i will see you guys in the next bye